What is your favorite color? Um, red. No, green. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Better get that answer right. Yeah, today we're going to be in Proverbs 20 and verse 7. We're talking about how how you do things in life literally can affect generations to come. How me? Yeah, I you. do things? Yeah, how Jason does it. Affects. We're talking about me today? No, me. Oh, you. Why is it going to be about you all the time? <laughs> when is it going to be about me? It's always about you. Everything's about you. No, everything's Not everything about has you. to be about Who's you. Who's on first? Yes. No, no, no. He plays third base. No, no. He's the pitcher? I don't know plays third base. What Where's plays this? second? Uh, Who is on first? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We'll be right back. That's probably one of the best bits of all time. Yeah, it really Who's is. Who's on first? It was just a comical You can find genius. it on YouTube still. Oh, no, it's magical. Evan Costello. Right? Is that who it is? Yeah, Evan Costello. Who's, Who's on, on first? first? It, it is really funny. No, it doesn't matter. Any, I watched it again like last year with Savvy. It, it's just a classic. It is. Anyway, good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. We've got an incredible show for you It's good today. to have you with us today. We're you talking about kind of generational blessings. Yeah. And I kind of got this a little bit from uh, Pastor Steve was talking uh, Sunday night. And so it's, it's pretty cool. Steve was talking about, um, and I was like, wow, I've never seen this before, where people get into generational curses. I've heard yeah. them my whole life. Oh, for sure. Well, it's generational curse, a generational curse. Got to break that generational curse off your life. But he showed in the scripture that um, the generational curse was for those that hate God. Yeah. Anyone who hates me, I will visit the father to the fourth generation with the iniquity. So you go... The so he goes, everybody in this room, only. anybody hate God? Everybody's like, well, no. He goes, okay. I hate God. So that's not part of your world. He goes, but the next part of the scripture goes, for those that love me, yeah. I will bless them for a thousand generations. A thousand generations. That's your So that's it's so funny promise. how man, man always wants to focus on the little negative. Oh, you got to. Well, yeah, I've never heard that. I've never, I don't know why I've never well, it's seen that. It's important that you know that because a lot of times we pull our health situation from our right. parents. Well, my dad had this, and medical so, science proves these things, right. but you don't have to participate in what medical science proves because there's a higher truth. And the higher truth is that I don't, I don't have to get that. I love what you just said. I don't have to participate. I don't. I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. It means that I, I'm here, but I don't participate in, in, in what science says. Just because my grandfather dealt with something, right? My grandfather dealt with gambling. It was a part of his life. I don't have to deal with that. No. Because I'm a child of the king. Yeah. And my kids don't deal with it. My grandkids don't deal with it. Yeah. Why is that? Because God's blessings will follow me and my children's children's children. That's right. So Proverbs 27, I thought this is kind of cool. So the righteous man, right, walks in his integrity. Which means that what I what I say, what I believe, I do. And I think to me, integrity, you can tell me. To me, integrity is more than just not lying. It's just being an integrous person means in a way that I care about other people. That's right. That's how I see it. Yeah. Like I have an integrity about me. And so I want to make sure that I'm kind, that I'm loving, that my word does mean something, but that when I do something, it's not what I can get out of it. But to me, an integrous man is somebody, it's about what I can give to other people. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I do. But it says his children are blessed after him. Mm. So wait a second. How you do life, Jason... How you do life yeah. affects my children. Your children. And they get whatever I've earned for free. That's kind of crazy. We, we reject the negative, but we we still embrace the positive. Right. You know, I talked about not getting your identity roots from your earthly father. We get it from our father, God. But there are still good things that we can gain through honoring. And I did say that in my message. You still mm, honor mom good. and dad because you're going to pull the good things and the good territory that they've, that they've pulled into their lives, the places where they've fought and battled and won and seen God move in their life, those things come freely to you uh, through honor. So you on, that's why you honor mom and dad is you're pulling the good things because mm -hmm. remember they couldn't get from Jesus healing in his own hometown because they didn't honor him. In other words, they couldn't get the good Jesus' things. goodness into their lives because they dishonored him. Right. So when you don't honor your parents, you miss out on the good things that they that are your parents. And that's and the, there are good things. And that's the only commandment that has a promise for a long, prosperous life. Yeah. And uh, being able to pull those good things out of people. And how you do your life doesn't just affect you. I think it's interesting that our parents started behind the eight ball. I don't know what that means. I was like thinking about that. I'm like, they're behind the eight ball. When you think well, about it, it... it means you started in a bad position because right. in, in the game of pool, if you're behind the eight ball, then you can't... You, oh, you, you can't, can't hit the ball you're trying to hit because you're not allowed to hit the eight ball first. So if you think if it was a race, 
my mom and dad both started like if if this is zero, they started way in the negative, way behind where a lot of people started. Yeah. Right. But my parents lived an integrous life. They got saved and they did life different than my grandparents did. It's true. They really did. And so then what you find out is then me and Jason, then when we started off life, right? And I guess we were kind of here by the time we came around, right? But we, I felt like by the time we became adults, we were, we started with a little lead. We, yeah. had, we, we had a lead in marriage. We had, right? Our parents got us, a, it's like running a, a baton, what is that, a baton, right? They ran that first leg. It's true. Well, the ex grandma, grandpa ran the first leg, and they were way behind. And then mom and dad ran an incredible race up until, and they handed they us they, off the they, baton. They found out that God would bless the works of your hands, and and it, we we were very poor growing up. Extremely. But by crazy. the time I was graduating from college and moving out, that was around the time dad started investing in real estate. Right. And became a lot of people go, I bet it must have been nice growing up in a wealthy home. I'm like. <laughs> Okay, so no, that didn't happen until I moved out. We had one shower in our house, just so you know that. After one, I moved out. We had out, to knock every every morning on I can tell you, room. I can tell you that mom and dad were wealthy on the inside yes. already. Right. They 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 you could tell they were going to be wealthy right. because their mindset had completely changed from poverty mentality. But it still hadn't happened until after I moved. I was I was 19 years old, moving out, getting he, married. He got the house down and then on all Adobe. of a sudden they bought a new house. I'm like, well, where? And then they got a car, and then all of a sudden my dad's been investing in real estate. I'm like, well, where'd all this come from? Where? Yeah. Well, I missed out on this. We, we grew up with a but, TV this big. But it did also impact my mentality. I'm like, oh, okay, we're ownership people now. Right. We're different. And you we're know what? We're not impoverished, Even, and it helped set me free because they took territory. I didn't take. I got to walk into that land for free. And I was already kind of moving in that. I remember, you remember, I was the first one to have a new TV in the house. You were. And, and the first one to have a VCR. Because I, I did the math. I'm like, we're renting from Blockbuster. It's like $15 to rent a VCR. At Sears, I can get a VCR for $15 a month. Yeah. And I get a TV. And so then every I would come home and the whole family's in my bedroom watching TV. <laughs> and the well, VCR. it was a nice TV. It was big, too. And then I had, I, had a, I had a cordless phone. Somebody dropped my phone in the pool, though, and I had to investigate it. Because <laughs> you turned it upside down and water came out. <laughs> it didn't I was work. I was laying on a raft in the pool. I was with my phone. Sixteen years old, and it rolled off the raft into the pool. <laughs> it was like a two hundred dollar phone. I was like, so I put it back on the charger. <laughs> it just kind of hoped for the prayed. best. He was just praying for. Hey, it. do you know why my phone doesn't work? No, I have no idea. He turns it over and water comes out. <laughs> He's well, like, well, it could be the water. Jason, Jason literally goes, he goes, well, it, maybe because I dropped it in the pool. <laughs> but he said a maybe there. Like he didn't know could it could be, be anything. Could be a lot of things. It could be a lot of maybe things. Maybe just old. And we laugh. I love my brother so much. But you saw where where we took off, right? When we had kids, Jason. So our parents broke off, in a sense, divorce. Yeah. And they made marriage. Didn't mean they had a, the perfect marriage. They fought, but they they were committed. They fought for their marriage. They though. fought. That's, that's hard. what I remember. I remember them fighting, but I remember them. They were fighting to stay together because it was everything in them to to want to want to be divorced because that's all they'd ever seen. So they 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 integrous in their marriage in a sense, right? And so then when me and Jason got married, like we we started with a big head start on marriage. Yeah. Right. Well, this is okay. We we had a better idea what what marriage a healthy. My parents had no idea what a healthy marriage looked like. Literally, they had none. no idea what, what being a good father or good mother looked like. But none. they but they became it. Right. They were great parents, and so, so that taught us. So we walk in the blessing of of how to be a good father and a good mother. It was easier for us. I still had to read books. I still had. Then to, you see where our kids start off. They get they it's start just, out even further dumb. than we did. It's even dumb how it far really they does. are. I'm like, yeah. are you kidding me? This is where you guys get to start. I didn't get to start there. But here's the thing: you're watching this play, and you might be like mom and dad, my parents, who you're like, man, everything, my parents, my grandparents, everything was just a mess. What's exciting is you can make a difference. You can start right now, moving in a sense, living life differently than they did, and you won't just bless your life because look at where mom and dad is, right? They did. They they finish way ahead of probably anybody in their high school in their world. They finish way ahead. People, my uncle had trouble even talking to my mom. He goes because you weren't supposed to be successful. Yeah, he literally said that to her. He goes, "You weren't supposed to be successful." Yeah, and I don't know how. Which to is a great compliment. Right, I don't know how to rectify that. Yeah. All right, or is it rectify? Did I say it right? Reconcile. Reconcile. Rectify. I don't know. What I think rec rectify is to like fix something or like. Right. But I think it works. Either way works. So you can be that generation that doesn't just set your you 
Like, well, your kids, your my grandkids will be talking about my mom and dad, right? My great great grandkids will still be talking about mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Tom and Maureen and what they did for the family. You can do the same thing. Amen. Amen. A righteous man walks in the in, in his integrity. His children will be blessed. I love that. Thank I love you, that my, what I do blesses my children. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We right. encourage you to partner with us. Be a blessing. It allows us to get this message. It really does allow us to get on pray.com. And eight dollars a uh, week, eight dollars a week is a partner. Yeah. Just eight bucks a week. And uh, so we encourage you to partner with us. You want to pray over? I do. Father, I thank you, Lord, that that you're teaching us about your integrity. And we are taking territory, Father, not just for ourselves, but for our children and for our children's children, that we're walking deeper into your promises. And Lord, children don't have to be our own offspring, but they can be the, the, the just like Jesus had disciples. There can be people that are following us, that we can help grow into the things of God, that we can show them, Lord, how we took territory. So I thank you and praise you, Lord, that, that you do this thing for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Movie quotes. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I didn't see anybody guessing last week's movie quotes. Yeah, we did. Who guessed them? It was 300. Which is funny. I think that was a few weeks ago. What did what did I movie quote? Because last no, week I, I did, did I did I just did, friends. Nobody what was yours? nobody uh, guessed Kung Pao. Yeah, I'd never seen that yet. But my, you know, it's sad to me. Kung Pao is a really oddly funny movie. I was I'm annoyed that my nobody kids, knows it. I told my kids I went home because you told me about it. Yeah, and my kids are like, oh yeah, we love that's the funniest movie. I'm like, how did I not get invited? Yeah, we never got invited to this. I didn't get invited to this, and I go, oh, Dad never watched Mountie Grail with us. The Holy so, Grail. The Holy Grail, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, all right, but now we're going to watch it. Yeah. I'm going to watch it this week Kung with my Pao, kids. you going to watch it? I am. I I'm can't excited wait about it because it sounds so funny. So Movie Quest is from my one of my family's favorite. And uh, he's like, I drink green tea every day. Yeah, I don't you know, know take, that, you're gonna I don't take know that the, movie. You're going to get the demons out of me? That's my hat now. My hat now. One of my favorite. I don't know that movie. Yeah. I find your lack of faith disturbing, Captain. <laughs> That's like a dead giveaway, right? Mine are easy. But this one is not last week. I like the, he's just spraying the hose. He's like, he's like, don't ever tell me how to live my life. And he sprays him with the hose. What is this movie? There's no mystical energy field that controls my destiny. Ancestors protect us. Okay, just type in the comments if you know that. I want to know the answer to this movie. I'm not going to ask him. Protection I'm asking you. Granted. Type in the comments what movie. Cool beans. Cool We're beans. Both quoting here. Cool. You haven't heard of cool beans. You don't get cool that many quotes. Beans. You got four quotes. You don't get cool four quotes. Beans. No, you don't get four cool quotes. Be- cut them off. <laughs> don't cut me off. Quotes, don't ever cut me off. off. Watch this clip. That God's bountiful life is up ahead of us. You know, the, the Bible says that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches of glory. Right? So needs are met. But if you want to have abundance, it's something that we have to take with God. We have to go forth and we have to go after. We can't just sit in the wilderness and expect God to bring the abundance to us. It doesn't work that way. The Israelites show that. that bears it out in the scriptures. They're in the wilderness. God's like, all right, here's your manna. You can't even store that up. You can't even save it up. Why? Because God didn't want them to sit. God's a God that wants them to take territory. He says, I'll go with you. We can take it, but you're going to have to do some laps. And here's the thing in life. You and I have learned that we're going to have to do some laps in life. But the blessings and the prosperities and the abundance is so worth the effort. And it's not that I do it on my own because I wouldn't be able to do it. They couldn't take Jericho on their own. It's that God is working through me, that God will do the impossible, but I have to be somebody who steps out. Our scripture is Psalm 65, 11. It says, you crown the year with a bountiful harvest, even the hard pathways of overflow with abundance. The hard pathways is something that I walk through, but there are things and obstacles that I walk out in this life. But I can't just pray. Now, prayer is an important part of an abundance life. Faith is an important part. But the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Yes, I pray. Yes, I have faith. But there are things that I have to do to be able to have abundance. You can't treat your wife like garbage for 25 years, come up here, and I just boop, and I pray over you, and you go home, and she's like, well, you treat me like a jerk all the time, but I just love you. I'm so in love. It doesn't work that way. You're going to have to put some effort into your marriage. Prayer is important, right? But then there are some things that we have to do to be able to experience the blessings that God wants us to have in our life. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, be in church this weekend. Wherever that is. Yes, and don't forget we have a Revival Arizona happening at ASU Tempe 
Uh, October 23rd and 24th, 7 p.m. We're going to be worshiping God under the stars. Hillsong worship is going to be there. Hillsong College worship. And uh, it's go to revivalaz.com to register. You got to register. Why won't you respect me? Just respect me. I don't know this movie, but I respect you. Thank you. Yes. See you tomorrow.